chapter 3.5, specific heat capacity, this time calculations. Let's look at task 3.11. How much energy, so we're looking for energy, is required to heat 220, 220 grams of lead so that the temperature changes from 20 to 50 degrees Celsius? Let's identify everything that we have. How much energy? I'm looking for Q. Q is the symbol for energy. Is required to heat 220 grams of lead. So the mass in this case is 220 grams. Now we're dealing with lead and the element symbol for lead is PV. You'll learn that. So that the temperature changes from 20 to 50 degrees Celsius. So that's a change in temperature. So that's going to be delta T. Okay, delta T is always temperature final minus temperature initial. TF, temperature final, minus TI, temperature initial. The final temperature in this case is 50. The initial temperature is 20. So that means delta T is 30. 50 minus 20 is 30. So that's 30 degrees Celsius, so that's our delta T. So that's all the information they give us. Let's look at the equation we're going to use. Q equals mc delta T. So there's the equation. Let's highlight what we have. Mass, I have. Delta T, I have. I don't have C and I don't have Q. So those are two things that I'm looking for. Hmm. Well, C is specific heat capacity. And as it turns out, specific heat capacity depends on the substance. The substance that we're using in this case is lead. So we have that value on your pink sheet. Let me show you. I'm going to go into your chemistry OneNote. And there's the pink sheet. And on the second page of the pink sheet, here's the front periodic table. Here are some equations. This, that's specific, that is the specific heat capacity equation. Down here then, table B is the specific heat capacity of some common substances. Now, we're using lead. Lead is right there. So that's the specific heat capacity of lead. Let's add that to our data. So that means we know what C is. C is 0.129 joules per gram degree Celsius. And again, I got that from the pink sheet. I'm just going to make a note for you. It's on the pink sheet. So now I know what C is. So I know everything but Q, and that works because that's what I'm looking for. Let's plug in all the numbers that we have. Q is equal to 220 times C, 0.129, times delta T, which is 30. Use my calculator this time. I'm not going to show it on the screen. It sort of bogs down the computer. So I got 220 times 0.129 times 30. And I get a value of, for my Q, 851.4. Now, Q is energy. Energy is measured in joules. So that's joules. Okay. Let's look at another one. How much energy is released when 220 grams of lead changes from 212 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit? There's a problem. One, I've got Fahrenheit, but I need Celsius. So we need to convert that Fahrenheit temperature to Celsius. Let's go ahead and do that. The equation, and I'm going to do this up here, is temperature Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 times the temperature in Celsius plus 32. 
So 212 is equal to 1.8 times x plus 32. I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides. That gives me 180 is equal to 1.8 x. I'm going to divide both sides by 1.8. One hundred is X, which is the temperature in Celsius. That's for the first one. We got to do forty as well. So let's go ahead and convert that forty one. So forty is equal to one point eight times the temperature Celsius plus thirty two. I'm going to subtract thirty two from both sides. So that's eight is equal to one point eight times the temperature in Celsius. Six point two is equal to the Celsius temperature. So let's fill in that information. Two twelve. I'm going to cross that out and put one hundred degrees Celsius. Forty. I'm going to cross that out and put six point two degrees Celsius. So now I can calculate my delta T. My delta T, again, it's final minus initial. So in this case, it's six point two minus 100 or negative 93.8 degrees Celsius. What does a negative temperature mean? That means that the temperature became lower. Now my mass is still 220 grams. I'm still dealing with lead so the specific heat capacity is still the same as before which is 0.129 and I'm still looking for energy. Okay, here's the equation I'm going to use. Q equals mc delta t. And let's plug in everything we know. The mass is 220. The specific heat capacity is 0.129. And the delta t is negative 93.8. Don't let that negative disappear. Let's go ahead and do the calculation. 220 times 0.129 times negative 93.8. I get a value of, for my Q, negative 2,662.0. I'm going to round it to one decimal. That's joules. So look what we have. We have a negative energy, and that's fine. Negative energy means that energy is being given off. Energy is going out of the system. So that means energy is leaving the lead. Before, where we had a positive, positive means that energy is going into the lead. So I'm going to say that this is a positive energy absorbed or going into the lead. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one asks, what is the specific heat capacity of an unknown 50 gram object that releases 1,350 calories of energy as it changes temperature from 80 to negative 20 degrees Celsius. So I'm looking for specific heat capacity. So that's my C. That's my question mark. I have a 50 gram object. So the mass is 50 grams. It releases or gives off 1,350 joules. That means the Q is negative 1,350 joules. Releases means negative. As it changes temperature, so that's our delta T, from 80 to negative 20. So it's always final minus initial. So in this case, it's going to be negative 20 minus 80. That's negative 100.
So let's use our equation. Q equals m c delta t. I'm looking for c. I know what Q is. I know what m is. And I know what delta t is. So that means I can solve this problem. So my Q is negative 1350. My M is 50. My C I don't know. And my delta T is negative 100. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 50 and the negative 100. So that's negative 1350 is equal to, oh, lost my zero there. 50 times 100 is negative 5,000. And I still have the C that I'm looking for there. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5,000. So 3. So this is negative 1350 divided by negative 5,000. 0.27, I'm going to leave some space here, is equal to C. This is really lagging. My video is really lagging. So, sorry. Uh, so, what does that tell me? That tells me the specific heat capacity. That's how many joules it takes to raise one gram, one degree Celsius. Now, Specific heat capacity will always be positive. Let's end this video here so it's not too long, and then I'll do the rest of the problems in another video.